Hello, how are you? It's me, Lou. I'm here in the car. It's a little dark in the head zone. But uh, you can see I have a beard of me's. Not a beard of bees. A beard of, of me's. And uh, it's, I, it's, I agree with you if you're thinking this is a disturbing thing to see. Uh, I don't know why anyone would think this is a good idea. But, um, yeah, I mean, somebody thought it was a good idea. I mean, do you? It's slightly annoying with that uh, fact that they are also talking. This seems like a scene out of Pan's Labyrinth or something. I don't know. It's a, it's a little disturbing. So let's let's get rid of this this effect. It's uh, not so good. Anyway, I'm back here in the car. What is this? A Clash Royale? Look. Mm, let's see what that one's like. Oh, hello. That is not good mouth sync. What do you think? I don't think that's very good at all. Okay, nothing. That's fine. <laughs> anyway, uh, thank you for joining me here in the car once again. Um, of course, this is the move back with King Lou, your host. I'm transmitting live from my car in Brooklyn, New York. Um, and it is a, a crummy and windy day out. It was raining all day and then recently stopped, but it's still windy. And it was in the 50s today, so of course I'm wearing shorts because I hate pants. But, um, you know, now it's chilly enough to be like, mm, maybe shorts is a bad idea. Shorts are never a bad idea. <clears throat> Long pants are not good. In my opinion, I mean, maybe you prefer long pants or you're of the opinion that uh, short pants make you look like a 12 year old boy. I believe uh, John Hodgman once said that clearly. That's the look I'm going for. 12 year old boy. Um, I'm impish. What can I say? Anyhow, so here in the car, killing time. This morning I had a nice coffee and a muffin. Today I didn't have time to do any of that. I got out of the car, I got out of the train at like 5.10 and as usual the block was almost fully parked in, but I did find a space. Uh, of course, once I pulled into my very small parking space that, it was, that required some very accurate parking to get into, a guy three cars back pulled out and left. That's just how it goes. Parking, you know, there's no rhyme or reason to parking. I mean, you can, like, try to schedule and, you know, calculate when do people leave work, when do people have to move their cars. There's always going to be a wild card, and you're never going to be able to get it 100% right. Because, uh, I mean, I suppose if you were, like, super OCD parking guru, you might know exactly what's going on. You probably memorize all the license plates, all the cars, but not for me. I think it's, uh, it, there's just too much chaos in the system. Uh, thank you for tuning in Andy D. Uh, and it's true. I, earlier today I was telling Andy D who has, who has sat here next to me in a, a early, uh, summer morning that someone, he gave me a coffee cup when he came to sit in the car and, uh, of his company, 10 Tent Hit Mouse, uh, has a wide variety of uh, office speak related bro coffee cups. And uh, he gave me a, a, a don't bro me bro uh, coffee cup and it disappeared at work. So either uh, somebody stole it, which is possible. Let me turn my car on, keep the power going in the, um, in the uh, phone. But either someone stole it or like the cleaning lady broke it there used to be a phenomenon where cups would disappear and then reappear. Uh, but I think that someone just uh, stole or broke it. So, a great sadness for myself. Um, but, um, you know, what are you going to do? This is life. This is the one you get. So go and have a ball. 
this is it. This is it. So up on your feet. Somewhere there's music playing. Uh, they're also rebooting that show. One day at a time. That's what the theme song I'm singing. And uh, I just found out they're rebooting it. Except instead of it being a scrappy uh, little feminist single mom of, of two girls, one a famous drug addict, um, and the other married to famous rock and roller. Herself famous as well. But uh, now they relaunched it, and in the, uh, the way they do things like that these days, it's about a Hispanic family. And Rita Moreno is in it. Always a favorite of mine from watching her as a child on The Electric Company. Uh, and I think she can still do the Hey You Guys thing. Now, I wonder if the Hey You Guys thing is a homage to Carol Burnett. I don't want to get too inside, you know, to think about that kind of thing. The, you know, Hey You Guys versus Carol Burnett's Tarzan call which was, uh, you know, her big old calling card back in the Carol Burnett days. Um, you know, we recently watched, uh, there was a kind of a tribute to Carol Burnett show that was kind of cringy and kind of gross um, on uh, uh, CBS or whatever. And, uh, I, you know, there's so many episodes of that show that, I watched as a kid over and over and over again. But when I was watching a lot of these things, I was like, I didn't see those. And I just wonder how many there actually were and what we saw in the, you know, the super edited versions that were on Channel 5 before it was Fox. Uh, I'm sure that we only saw a small sampling. But maybe it's one of those things where we actually saw the best of the shows, like sort of trimmed out all the all the terrible sketches and put in good ones, and none of the no no awkward moments with those sketches. But I was really surprised how many episodes I was like, oh, I do not remember that one. And of course, the ones I do remember very well, are Mrs. Huygens, a living treasure, dwarf on golf. Um, yeah, so. Quiet day here in, in the car, Tuesday, Alpha Tuesday, hanging out in the car. I was uh, sitting in here and I was thinking about, you know, what am I going to do when this sitting in the car thing gets so big that, you know, I don't need, I can afford not to sit in a car anymore. Will I still sit in a car and talk to people when I don't need to anymore? Like Cat Greenleaf, who did famously the uh, sort of weird at weird hours talk show called talk stoop where she would have people sit on the stoop of her building in uh williams or uh, in uh, greenpoint or whatever it was in brooklyn or cobble hill or whatever and so she would have famous people come and like sit on her stoop and they would talk and uh you know it's supposed to be kind of like a new york experience and whatnot um and then she moved to california and turned the show into like, uh, she had like a weird fake stoop that she put up in California and got people to sit on that. It just wasn't the same. And now every once in a while I see her doing it again, but it's, it's one of those like, uh, is this old? Is she back in New York? Uh, is she, I think the California, I think the California thing with the fake stoop was really like trying too hard to make a connection to her time in New York and uh, see I would have call it talk comma stoop and I'm calling you a stoop you dumb idiot talk stoop let's hear what you got to say it's a little more in your face aggressive but uh, you know I also like calling people stupid because uh, it implies that I'm smarter than them it could be accurate or false there's no bearing on whether it is it's just I'm insulting you so that would be the name of my show that I did where I sat on a stoop and I'd be like talk stoop talk stoop you can see clearly the comma in the inference 
uh, of who I'm talking to when I'm referring to someone being a stupid person versus the stupor of the uh, building. Oh, nuance. Um, whoa. I finished uh, the Southern Reach trilogy, uh, which I sort of tore through over the last couple of the last month or so. Um, you know, there's that new movie with Natalie Portman coming out, and I was like, oh, this looks intriguing. Let me read the book series. Despite the fact that the book series kind of got like eh, reviews, uh, and I would also give it a meh review, but um, uh, it was basically um, without being too spoilery. I remember uh, my old boss at Savoyant used to say that uh, he was always disappointed when they would something would be happening so big off screen that they couldn't show it. It was too amazing to show. And so you open a door and people are like, wow! And then it cuts to them being like, that was amazing. And all three books are, are talking about this thing that they don't understand and they don't know whether or not it's, uh, you know, they don't know anything about it and they can't learn anything about it and they keep sending people into it and it's affecting them, and they don't know how to describe how it's affecting them, and they're just like, yeah, man, you know, I'm having trouble understanding how it's affecting me. It's changing me, but I don't know how. I can feel a fox. I'm becoming a fox, but I'm never a fox, but I'm also a fox, and, and also things are weird, and I was kind of like, you know, at a, at a certain point, I was just like, I just have to finish this book whether or not I like it or not. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, um, yeah, just constantly describing a th an undescribable thing that is different for every person who's experiencing it. And, uh, you know, the basic truth that there is no solution to the problem that they're trying to solve. Right. Which is what is this thing? And is there any way we can stop it? And, you know, the answer is no. And everyone has to just sort of deal with the fact that, uh, this is going to happen and it's going to change everything and there's nothing anyone can do and uh, they'll all go crazy and then they'll turn into something else. It's, you know, I guess there's a lot of spoilers in there. I doubt you're going to read the books. Um, but I am interested to see how they treat it in the movie because the, the trailer for the movie looks like uh, they have the basic concept of what's going on, but they, and it's sort of, May, might be all three books in one, which would be doable because the books have a ton of filler where people are just describing the undescribable sensations that they're having and uh, what they're planning to do but never end up doing about the sensations and whatnot. So, yeah, I read that book times three and uh, now they're sitting on my shelf. But they're the kind of books I don't want sitting on my shelf but I'll probably donate them to um, uh, our beach house or something. You know, I've got a lot of books right now that I think deserve a home in a place where people who want to do some casual reading might pick them up. Um, and like the, the beach house at our beach house, some of those books are clearly like nostalgia holdovers, where it'll be like you know, they're books from like the forties. Um, you know, weird old novels that no one reads anymore. Um, and there's a fair amount of, you know, Danielle Steele style romance novels and whatnot. Oh man, I'm wearing, oh, I forgot the heat's on. I'm not going to sing the song, but you have it in your head because the heat is on. I gotta turn this heat down. I'm roasting. I'm gonna open this window, let some of this wind in here. Oh, the wind has died down and everything. Before, like, the shadows of the trees were all moving over the place. You can all remember the time that I sat in my car and it was so windy that the whole car was shaking and it was scary. And there was we, all the scaffolding was making noise. So scary. So scary. But, uh, anyhow. How are things with you? This is, I think, one of the first times I've done this where... Maybe two people have watched. And it's uh, it's a sadness for me. But uh, people will watch later. They watch on their own time. It's the beauty of uh, 
this DVR world we live in now. Uh, time shifted viewing. There's no there's no more appointment viewing uh, because you just uh, tell your cable box record that or you torrent it or you wait until it shows up on your Netflix or your Hulu or your Amazons. Um, I don't know. I would like to cut the cord as they say. I've done it before. Um, it just leads to a lot of being angry at Netflix for not having the content that you want. Um, but you know, I was, you know, the, the prices for doing the, uh, you know, if you do like the PlayStation has their own TV service and YouTube has their own TV service, Hulu has their own TV service. They're not necessarily any cheaper than buying the TV package from, um, Spectrum, which is, you know, a drag, if you ask me. But, um, you know, what are you going to do? You got to have cable. You need to be able to watch as much television as possible, even when you're not home to enjoy it for two thirds of the day. Uh, you got to pay for it even when you're not using it. I think that's fair. But, um, yeah, my cable bill. We killed our phone, our landline, and our cable bill has been slowly creeping back up to fill that gap that I had. The money that I was saving is now no longer being saved, and it's just the same old bill again. So now I have to find another way to reduce service. Now, um, uh, hey, Hal, I'm glad that you're watching. It's very exciting here in my car. Um, someone, I, b I believe you're in Washington State. Um, but I don't know where, I don't know if you're, I don't know where your offices are located or if you're at home. No, you wouldn't be at home. It's the middle of the day unless you have some kind of a cool work schedule. Um, whoa, there was a man pulled over with 476 pounds of pot in Washington state. Was he delivering it to a dispensary or some sort of legal weed store? These are things that we don't have in New York, so I don't know how it works. Um, I am looking forward to visiting a legal marijuana store when I go to California next month. Um, and then I just have to figure out how many, um, you know, pounds I can fit inside myself to get it back to New York. But, uh, it should be a fair amount. Pot's pretty small. Uh, but, uh, I imagine... At a certain threshold of weight, I don't know what the penalty is. I mean, I'm assuming it goes up if you're driving around with 476 pounds of marijuana. Because, um, I mean, what's your legal uh, what's your legal limit just buying? Um, you know, if you go to the store, you can buy like an ounce. Well, that's a lot more ounces than you're allowed to have. So I bet that guy's in a lot of hot water. But uh, also, if you're driving 476 pounds of marijuana, I think you might know what you're up against. And maybe you shouldn't have been driving with that much weed. But the weed's got to get around. Can't drive itself. And yes, John, I would put it in my butt. But I would also put, and we're talking about weed, put the weed in my butt, but I also, if I'm going to be bringing back a lot of weed, I was thinking about looking into having my appendix removed and making sort of a, a, a pocket, but that would show up on the screen, the zipper. Uh, anyway, i got to find some other way, some, some sort of a cavity to fill with, in my body with marijuana. And then when I get it here, it's strict profit. I mean, there's, if there's a downside to this, I'd like someone to point it out to me because I don't believe that there is. Um, I think that this is, uh, you know, until Cuomo gets some guts and legalizes marijuana for New York City. Oh, hello, Dinah. Another person from Seattle chiming in, or Washington State, I should say, chiming in. Because, again, I don't know where Halcyon or John is... is uh, Halcyon, Halcyon uh, is, and, but Dinah was awake this morning, um, 
at uh, was it three four a.m. her time to follow along with my show. This and uh, now you've rejoined, and it's a delight as always to have you. Um. Yes, yes, yes. I was thinking that you might have enjoyed hearing about my talk stoop uh, show where I insult people. Uh, oh, there you go. I'm sure. Oh, aren't there prices on the websites? Ah, Bellevue. I see. Um, yeah, I would think that the, the local websites would have some sort of pricing information. Although, they probably change it for whatever's in and the prices and the variants and stuff. Oh, you're at the fancy secret Starbucks. What does that mean? What does that mean? Is there there's a, a Starbucks that no one knows about? Or is it like it's inside another star there's a the famous uh, onion joke about the Starbucks opening inside another in the bathroom of another Starbucks. But um, it may have been a Simpsons joke. But I think it was in the onion. Oh man. So just waiting. We got three more minutes here in the car. Um, it's been a quiet day here on the stream. Mostly just me talking to myself. Talking about hiding weed. Uh, it's a Starbucks that pretends it's not a Starbucks, but there's a Starbucks inside a Starbucks. That is great. It's like a self-fulfilling prophecy. But it's a Starbucks. Is it Starbucks branded? Or is it like McDougal's from coming to America where it's like Starbucks and uh, or like the fake Starbucks that opened uh, and got sued or like uh, shut down notices from Starbucks right uh, a few years ago I don't know but maybe you do anyhow um I don't know if you guys are all aware, but there's a huge EVE Online uh, spaceship battle happening with, like, supposedly the most uh, participants ever happening right now on Twitch. It's, uh, I don't know. There's a goons group, which may be a something awful thing, but um, uh, yeah, there's, like, 4,900 people participating in this uh, EVE Online battle, and they're all uh, their people monitoring it. Now, of course, the problem is that monitoring it from, like, uh, a distance, it, just, it literally just looks like a bunch of circles and dots. Uh, and there's not... And then they'll they'll be like, oh, that was an explosion. It'll just be, like, a big ever-expanding circle miasma. And, uh, you know, it'll it's hard to tell what the fuck is going on. And every once in a while, they'll, someone will post video of like the up close of what's happening in the battle. And it, again, it just looks like vlogs in space with lines coming off of them. And you're sort of like, I have no idea what the hell's going on. Um, hello, Miguel. Mickey, how are you? Uh, someone, someone watching from this side of the country. But, uh, oh, I was going to say that, um, so I wanted to read this. A Starbucks is a stealth Starbucks that has no Starbucks branding and pretends it's an indie coffee shop. Uh, but so, like why, uh, just to, are they trying to expand into the non-Starbucks coffee world? So they, it's a Starbucks, but they just don't brand it and somehow still charge the same prices. I mean, we have a Joe coffee down the street, and I will say that paying $3 for a small cup of coffee in the morning was quite a shock. Uh, you know, and then uh, the muffin, with the muffin, it was 6 bucks, And that was just like, what? Um, so, you know, I was like, uh, I could have gotten like a full egg sandwich with bacon, Bacon egg on cheese, B E C, as it's known, uh, at the Korean coffee place or the Korean deli on the corner, and 
you know, I would have been more replete than than, than with my uh, Joe coffee, but it was closer. I've become paranoid that if I go too, straight too far, the ticket vulture will come get me. Oh, look at that. It's more expensive than regular Starbucks. That is nuts. And it's supposed to be an in... That doesn't smell all right. I guess they figure if people think it's cool, they'll pay more? Uh, I, I'm not crazy about any of this. But, uh, yeah, I try not to go to Starbucks uh, in general. I don't drink a lot of coffee. I drink... You know, at work I drink Red Bull, but I thin it out with seltzer so it lasts a really long time. Um, but I, I drink coffee infrequently. I go, I go, to, I, and we have a, we have a Nespresso or whatever the fuck in our office. Um, but uh, I go across the street to the Brooklyn Roasters and get a more expensive cup of coffee than the free cup that I could get. Um, just to get out of the office and stretch the legs every once in a while. But, uh, you know, uh, am I winged? Uh, if it was the Chinese Red Bull, then I would be winged because that shit is amazing. American Red Bull, less amazing. Uh, I really wish we'd get the Chinese Red Bull. It's so much better. I think we, we may have gone there when you were uh, hanging out that one time. It's right across the street from my office. Yes, but um, when I was in uh, Ch in Shanghai, I experienced the Chinese Red Bull. Uh, or is it Thai Red Bull? I'm not sure. Um, but it's not carbonated and it has uh, extra vitamin B and other shit in it. So it's strong. I like it quite a bit. Um, but uh, yeah so are you saying the social interaction of going to the coffee shop is important um, Miguel I'm not sure I yeah we I mean we we go get our coffee and we take a little stroll uh, through uh, the Flatiron district walk stepping gingerly over the stumble bums and heroin addicts all trying to uh get uh, a few imaginary dollars for their imaginary tickets home but uh, yeah I saw a guy who said that his his ticket fund got stolen so he was starting at square one this guy's had a I needed to get a ticket home for my mom's breast cancer sign for like three years so glad to hear his mom's you know still hanging on but uh uh, he's having a really hard time picking up that ticket because he's picking up a different kind of ticket and putting it in his arm. Because he's a junkie! Just didn't, I, I'm sorry if I put it all together for you, but uh, I didn't want you to have to guess what I was talking about. Anyway, thanks for joining me, everybody. I'm going to get out of my car now because it is 6 o'clock. Um... Uh, yes, it has a casino table and roulette wheel for no reason in the back. And the, there's the acoustics at that Brooklyn Roasters are insane. It can get really loud in there. Very bright. Anyway, uh, I'll see you guys later. Uh, it's lovely talking to you. And thanks for joining me here in my car. We'll see you later. Bye-bye.